Hello and welcome to Maker Hanger. My name is Lucas Weekly, and today we're going to be talking about receivers. These take the signals from the transmitters. We'll talk about how they're powered and also where to place them on your RC plane. So let's get started. The ports on the receiver correspond to the channels on the transmitter. The channels on your receiver go in order by first battery or bind port, then the throttle, the aileron, elevator, rudder, gear, and auxiliary. The auxiliaries are for your accessories, and they go from auxiliary 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, depending on how many channels your transmitter has. The number of channels that the receiver has does not have to be the same as the transmitter, or vice versa. As long as they are the same brand, the transmitter could have 9 channels and the receiver could have 6, or it could be the other way around. The only thing that'll happen is the extra channels just won't be used. To get your receiver to talk to your transmitter, you first have to bind them. All receivers come with bind plugs. These short out the leads inside of the bind slash battery port, and open the receiver to a transmitter's bind signal. When the transmitter turns on and sends its binding signal, then they'll link up and be connected. I'll explain how to do this in more detail when we program the radio for the plane in a later episode. Okay, so receivers get their power through ESCs with their built-in BECs like we talked about before. The ESC plugs in through the throttle port and the receiver gets power through this port. A receiver can also be powered by an external BEC plugged into the bind slash battery port. An external BEC is needed for a plane with more than four servers. This is because having more than four servos will max out the BEC inside of the speed controller, making the servos glitch. External BECs use a Y harness to plug into the flight battery so only one battery is needed for the plane. The servo leads are plugged into the receiver with the signal wire pointed up where the text is. The signal wires on the connector are either white or yellow, and then the middle wire on the connector is always power, so it's red. And then the bottom wires on the connector are ground, so those are either brown or black. Now let's talk about placement of the receiver inside your plane. To start off, you always want to keep your antennas straight on the receiver. This will make sure that you have proper signal going to your plane. You can mount the receiver on the top or bottom or any of the sides of the plane, as long as it's in line with the plane. Just don't mount your receiver too close to the ESC. The ESC lets off some interference which can mess with the signal going to the receiver. For park flyers this isn't very important, but still try to keep the receiver as far away as the ESC as you can, just in case. And that's it! We've covered all the electronic components for an RC plane. Next time I'll be showing you all the parts that we're going to be using on the Maker Trainer, as well as how to hook them up and solder the connectors on. So I'll see you then, thanks for watching.